Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing really well. So before we get into today's reading, I just want to give a very special thank you to those of you who have donated um, ever to my channel and recently as well. Um, it's not like I have a crazy following or anything, so that's why it's like so helpful because that means I don't really make much of anything from the ads. Um, so yeah, I just really appreciate it so, so much, especially during this time where we have 12% inflation in my country and 65% increase in, in electricity, which like we had the highest electricity in, in Europe to begin with, so it's like crazy, um, let alone like everything else like fuel and gas, but I know it's been tough for um, a lot of you out there. So that just makes me all the more grateful and I just wanted to express that, um, my gratitude, because I know, I know things are hard. So thank you guys so, so much. I want you to know that it really is helpful and I really, really do appreciate it and acknowledge um, all your support, not even just donations, even the comments, your subscriptions, just everything. So yeah, feeling a lot of love today. Um, and with that said, today's reading, Divine Soulmate Connections, Twin Flames, we're going to be looking at the Divine Masculine's energy as well as the Feminine's energy and also what is coming up in the next week or so. And it is general, so it's not going to be everybody's reading as always, but if you would like a personal reading, you can find all that information in the description box. And I think that's about it. So let's get into this reading and see what is going on. Because I do feel like a lot is going on. So let's see. For the masculines. What is going on currently, please, for the masculines? Oh, we have Angel of Love. All right. So love is on their mind. They're thinking um, a lot about love. And I feel like we had a very similar message come out either in the last reading or the reading before that. And I feel like this keeps happening. Like, I think, I feel like I'm always saying that. Like anything that comes up, I'm like, oh, we saw that in the last reading. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's just confirmation. And of course, it does make sense because energies, you know, they don't change <clears throat> so quickly from one week to the next. So yes, masculines are thinking a lot about love. What is love? What is true love? What is pure love? Right? What is unconditional love? And what is not? Who is providing and giving love to them in their lives? And who is not? Let's see what else. All right. And we have the hardest moon fruition. And let me just get a couple more here. They're really wanting to bring love into their lives. That's what this is about. So they're in this energy of wanting to manifest love, feeling like um, while they are in separation with their feminines, there's a lack of love. So it could be that events are happening because I do get that there are a lot of intense triggers and that is also what we've been getting in the past couple of weeks. So let me just get a few more. We have return, deception, and guide. Yeah, so <clears throat> there's definitely some deception going on in their lives. Um, and this is either them deceiving their own selves or other people deceiving them and them just allowing it. I feel like this is really coming to the forefront right now and they're being able to, they're able to discern between what is love and what is deception. What is masked love? or what is um, pretending to be love, you know, like, or something that's disguised as love, but really isn't love. All right, so this, for some of them, this could have to do with other people. And then for others of them, it has to do with their own selves. Like, what is it that they thought was love? Or, you know, um, avoiding love and wanting something more superficial because that something more superficial was more convenient or more comfortable or, you know, whatever. So right now they're wanting to come back they're wanting to come back to love and to bring that into their reality. And they're, like I said, I feel like they're being triggered um, big time. I actually feel like there's a lot of pressure on the masculines right now. Um, so there's a lot of events that are happening where they're being deceived and these deceptions are becoming very, very apparent. Again, it doesn't have to be with other people. It definitely 
can be for a lot of them. For some of them though, like I said, it's their own deceptions. But these own deceptions that they have from their own self, they're coming to the forefront because things are happening. I can't even think of an example. I hope you guys understand. Things are happening to make them aware of this. And whatever these things are, um, first of all, they're divinely guided. But secondly, they're also very intense. They're very triggering. So a lot of pressure right now on the masculines. Let me just put these up here. All right, and let's get into the tarot. Let's see, what is going on here? What is all of this about? Let's get more details, please. We'll also look at their energy towards their feminines. But not yet. All right, so we have two that came out. Usually we get three. Um, we have the King of Cups in reverse, and we also have the Empress in reverse. So yeah, I'm getting that for a lot of them. There are other people in their lives um, that are that are not their divine feminine. All right, so a specific message for some of you where there is someone else. In the picture, it doesn't have to be a romantic partner. It can just be about anybody, but I am getting that it is a person. Um, it's false love, King of Cups in reverse. So, and this is something that they are becoming aware of. Like I said, you know, it's, it's becoming more and more apparent that the intentions of this person, are they're not pure. They're not pure. This is somebody who is jealous, and it could even be somebody who is very, very overpowering. Um, for some of them, it definitely could be like a mother figure. It doesn't have to be a mother, so to speak, but it could be something like a mother figure. Now, for others of them, this is talking about the masculines um, not having the love of their feminine in their lives. And again, that is what is coming to the forefront. Let me just get one more card for this row here. Okay, there's definitely something else that wants to come out here to complete this. All right, and we have the star together with the king of wands in reverse. So whatever this is, um, and I feel like this is the deception here, right? Um, this, whatever this empress in reverse is. And again, for a lot of them, it's their own self, right? It's them being out of tune with their own divine feminine energy, which then in turn also keeps them detached from their divine feminine, right? So this is something that they are um, moving towards overcoming, right? The fact that they have been weak, the fact that they have not been overcoming that challenge, right? It's like now there is hope. Now they're getting a lot of support from the universe, but I feel like this support from the universe, it's coming in in a very, very challenging way. Um, so again, it's like they're being, they're being very heavily triggered right now in order to see this. And this is especially for masculines who have been very, very resistant. And because they've been so resistant, it needs to come in in like a very powerful way in order for them to like wake up and see this. Let's see what is their energy towards their Divine Feminine. The Four of Wands, the Two of Swords, and the Knight of Swords. So this is um, their general energy. We will take a look also at their um, what's going on in their mind space, what they're thinking, as well as emotionally. Um, so generally here, I mean, starting it off, we have the Four of Wands. So they're definitely feeling right now like, you know, their feminine is who they want to be with. 
that is what they want to bring into fruition, right? That's what that angel of love is about, really feeling that love, really feeling that connected. Again, I'm feeling like um, it's like there's a portal that is open right now between the masculine and the feminine and so it's like your energies in the 5d it's like they're uniting so you might be picking up on this as well or just feeling more united <clears throat> with your masculine even if you're not in contact even if you feel put off even if you feel like you're losing interest possibly or um yeah it's like you and those things are legit i'm not saying you're not feeling those things those are legit okay if you're feeling them however it you might or might not be picking up on this like strange bonding just like this this connectedness <clears throat> and it's like the masculine is definitely feeling that <clears throat> however there's this they're still, they're still like holding back, right, with the two of swords. This is a bit of um, stagnation at the moment, trying to make a decision, trying to figure things out, not really knowing exactly what to do in terms of, of their feminine. I feel like, you know, they're more inclined to doing something about <clears throat> the situation that they find themselves in outside of their connection with the divine feminine, which is interrelated in some way anyway. Right? But they're more focused on that than on what to do about their Divine Feminine. But it's interesting that even though they're in this stagnation energy, we do also have the Knight of Swords. So this is telling me that <clears throat> they're, it, it's like they're wanting to move towards you. There is this drive of, it, it's like knowing that this is their truth. Knowing that this connection is there because they're really feeling that connectedness right now. And also knowing that they're not really doing anything. <clears throat> they know that this is that this connection is true and that it's also true that they're not. That they're the ones that are stagnating at the moment. So let's see what's going on <clears throat> in their headspace. What are they thinking? Alright, we have the Wheel of Fortune, the Knight of Cups in reverse, and I do want to get one more before I say anything. Alright, and the King of Swords. <clears throat> so I do love that we have the King of Swords right under the Knight of Swords, both upright. Um, they're wanting things to change. They know that it has to be them that makes a decision. Um, <clears throat> I do feel like at the moment, they, this masculine is definitely holding back a lot, especially with the Two of Swords and then the Knight of Cups in reverse right under it. They're holding back. Um, they're not wanting to make a love offer to you just yet <clears throat> because they're waiting for something to shift. They're waiting for that some kind of a shift to become more tangible, to become more concrete. Um, there's a lot of thinking here, a lot of thinking. I'm getting, um, for some of them even, a lot of overthinking, but that's not too worrisome right now because with the Knight of Swords and the King of Swords, I feel like it's clearing up. Um, whatever it is that they need to think about or to sort out, it's like, yes, it is confusing at the moment, and that's why there's this seemingly apparent stagnation, but... It's like they're on their way, moving from that Two of Swords to the Knight of Swords to the King of Swords, right? So when it comes to the, the thinking and the confusion, it's progressing to clear thinking and determinism, decision-making. I feel like what this is mostly about is just them being aware of the fact that they need to be more... Um, more persistent in what it is that they want, which is love. <clears throat> and they know that in order to have that love, they need to remove the deception. They need to turn the wheel in a different way. So they need to take a different approach than what they have been doing, which I've said that before. 
Um, so yeah, that's what they're thinking here. Let's see what is going on with them emotionally. I just realized you cannot see the cards down here. Let me just move them over temporarily and I will move them back before getting the feminine's energy. All right, so we have the who the three of swords, the ace of pentacles, the moon, and the six of pentacles. All right, <clears throat> so I'm pretty sure we got this three of swords the last time as well. So yeah, there's there's a lot of pain here. There, so like I said, these these triggers that they're going through right now. Um, even though these triggering events, cause that's how I'm getting them. Like there are events that are happening, like actual events. It's not just, um, energetic triggers, like out of the blue, just, you know, um, I don't know, feeling like an emotional roller coaster. No, it's like there are triggers that are happening as events in their physical environment. These triggers, they're very painful. Um, And even though it is in their, in their life outside of the feminine, it still relates to their feminine. And because of that, they're feeling this heartbreak. They're feeling this pain because of the triggers, bringing all of this to the forefront. Um, it's kind of like, you know, whatever it is that's going on in their material world right now, it just feels like it's dark. It's dark. Um, they can't. They can't see the light there, and this is something that they're wanting to balance out or find some kind of balance. But not just that. It's like they know that they need to do their part. I'm getting actually with the Six of Pentacles that this is them knowing that they need to give energy to this, whether it be to what is happening in their in their life, um, give energy to that in order to turn that wheel, or. Um, in some way give energy, give back to their feminine. But they're feeling like right now they don't even know what is going on. Um, emotionally, there's a lot of, again, triggers, fears. Just dark. It, it, it almost feels like the demons are coming out to play. Like It's like the masculines are being tested right now um, to reach that limit, to reach their limits, um, to see if they're going to set boundaries and are they going to set these boundaries, whether it be with other people or with their own self. So that's what they're being tested for right now. If it has to do with their own self, what I mean by that is that it is either them, um, setting boundaries concerning their own fears or concerning social conditioning or just anything that has been, you know, maybe their own addictions, desires, um, their comfort zone. It's like they need to set, set a boundary with their own self for some of them and for others, it's mostly to do with others, but I'm still getting it. It really comes down to their own self as well. Um, so yeah, I don't know where that came from, but that's that's a message <laughs> um, that came through here. So what I'm getting actually also is that some of them, you know, some of them are going to make it through. And what do I mean by that? It doesn't mean that others won't make it through. Like they're all going to level up, um, but it is like a window of opportunity. And some of them will really stand strong as this King of Swords, as this Knight of Swords, put people in their place or put their own thoughts in their place um, and set those boundaries, be stern where they need to be, right? And it's like they're going to have like a breakthrough, right? Now for others, it doesn't mean that they're not, but it just not might be the same level of a breakthrough, but the, everybody is still leveling up. That's the message that just came through. Um, so yeah, let me just put these over here. Let me see, is there anything that we want to clarify? Um, actually, no, I feel like these were pretty strong messages, so I'm just going to leave them as they are. 
So let's see <clears throat> for the feminines. And for those of them who don't have that breakthrough, I mean, that just means that they're learning, um, they'll have learned a lesson which is going to um, make them more prepared for the next time around. That's all that means. So for the feminine, let's see what is going on. All right, and we have cornucopia. All right, so that's very positive. Let's see what else. <clears throat> Balance, also very positive. All right, and then we have Crossroads, Abandoned, and Big Dreams. All right, okay, so multiple messages here for the feminines. Um, I feel like for the most part, like, you two, you're, I don't know if you're getting triggered exactly. I kind of feel like you are, but in a different way than the masculines. I feel like for the masculines, it's like they're getting triggered in a way where there's, like, so much pressure on them. I do get that that could be the case for the feminines as well, but I feel like for you, it has to do with other things. Um, not so much with your masculine, whereas for the masculine, it, it, it does relate more to their feminine. Like, in terms of releasing other things, you know, getting rid of deception and moving towards towards love right towards their feminine for the feminines it's for some of you there might be a pressure for other things right and which could relate to this crossroads but <clears throat> i'm not there yet <laughs> jumping ahead of myself here all right um so i feel like for the feminines you're if you are though feeling pressured you're feeling pressured to move towards or to figure out what it is that does make you happy what is it that you do deserve and what is it that does fulfill you and yes for a lot of you this does relate to the masculine in terms of you know the situation as it is right now does this make me happy no okay so what do i do about it i don't know all i can do is find balance right within my own self and so I feel like that's what you're doing or that's like one of the lessons that you are learning or that's what your spirit teams are working um, on you. Or that you're working, oh my God, okay, you guys get it. <laughs> I don't know what happened with that sentence, just ignore it. Um, but yeah, it's like you're, you're finding balance in terms of what is it that makes you happy and that your happiness does not depend on your masculines, all right? Um, and then for others of you, yes, this could definitely have to do with other things in your life, right? Like, are you in a job that you don't, that you don't like, you know, or that doesn't feel like it is aligned with you? And I do feel like there's mirroring here between the masculines and the feminines, if that is the case for you, because the masculines are also realizing um, the situations that don't align with them. What situations in their lives do not align with love or with th their higher purpose or with their being, with their soul. And for you, it's you know seeing what is not in alignment in your life, whether that's a job, other people, or you know whatever kind of a situation that you might be in. And so you're finding how to balance that out or what it is that you need to do or if there if you're in a situation where there's not much you can do or if this is only relating to your masculine it's finding that balance within yourself within that situation okay so moving on to the next set of cards here crossroads abandoned and big dreams i'm actually getting um there's a lot of confusion for some of the feminines out there and this confusion it's like I'm getting that for some of you, it's like you get like very intense triggers, but then you overcome them easily, which can be confusing because it's like, how can you go from like feeling so intensely triggered and feeling, you know, either angry or upset or feeling abandoned to all of a sudden, you know, feeling okay again. Um, <clears throat> so that in and of itself can actually be confusing for you. For 
um, others of you, this is also about like not really knowing or being confused about how to interact with your masculine if you do have that option. Or Or in terms of having hope versus releasing or how to do both at the same time. Because there's a part of you that does have hope and then there's a part of you that might be either losing interest but then the hope is still kind of there. So that can be confusing as well. And I feel like that's what this crossroads here is about. And it also is mirroring the Two of Swords um, on the side of the masculines. So yeah, on the one hand it's like, you know, you're feeling like this is done and you just want to abandon ship. And then on the other <laughs> hand, you know, then you have, you either have hope or, you know, you just kind of come back to that calling or to, you know, the big dream, figuratively speaking, um, <clears throat> concerning the masculine. And for some of you, you could actually be having literal, literal dreams. And so that can be confusing because if you're feeling one way during your waking life, and then you have a dream that's telling you like the exact opposite, then that can be confusing as well. And so that just kind of leaves you in this place of like really not knowing what to think or how you should feel. Not like you can really control how you feel 100%, but yeah, just being confused about it all. Um, let me get some tarot cards here. See if we can get any like insight into this or any advice for those of you that might be resonating with this. And of course, you know, again, it's not going to be for everyone. And that's okay. Nine of Cups, Seven of Cups, and the Nine of Wands. Okay, yeah, you're, some of you are being, again, there's this confusion, especially confusion concerning what it is that you want or what it is that, you know, might make you happy or confusion around whether you will have this. And so depending on whether you believe that you will have union with your masculine, you know, that it's like that kind of influences whether you, you want to hold on to hope or not. It, 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 it's coming in as if that's a choice right now for you. Or you're feeling like it's a choice. And it, and I feel like the feminine right now is thinking, okay, should I hold on to hope? Or should I completely move on? And is that even possible? So yeah, I actually feel like that cornucopia with balance is the guidance for you, you know, to just try to not have to decide. <laughs> which is probably easier said than done. But um, I feel like this confusion and feeling like you need to choose, like that, that can be very, very challenging because it's almost like it's a catch-22. Like you can't really choose one or the other. So you just have to find the balance in the situation and in the state as it is. Don't worry about whether you have hope or not. Don't worry about whether you're moving on or not. Um, if you have the option, you know, of dating others, you know, okay, you know, do, do what you feel from moment to moment. Don't try to think too far ahead. Don't try to make decisions now for tomorrow, which I know, like, <laughs> um, that can sound a little irresponsible, you know, it's like, oh, not planning ahead. Yeah, I know, but... That's the message I'm getting here for this particular situation, okay? I'm not saying to generalize that into, you know, your lives, although some people do, just living moment by moment, um, which is living in the now. But, um, yeah, just follow your intuition. Don't, at least for this situation, don't try to jump ahead of yourself. Don't try to make a decision now for, you know, what you're going to feel tomorrow or what you want to do tomorrow, you know, um, if you feel like dating today, you know, go ahead. If you don't, then don't. Don't force yourself either. Just because you feel like you should be doing that, you know? Do what you do what you feel. And don't worry about whether you have hope or you don't have hope. Just like leave it to the side and, and let hope do what it wants to do. Cause then, you know, it's also um <laughs> 
you know, the other thing that happens is, like, if you do have hope and you're trying not to have hope, well, the more you try not to have hope, like, the more it's just going to be there because you're focusing on it, you know? So just just let it be what it wants to be. That's, that's the message here, and I don't think I'm going to get any more here for the feminines. Let's actually move on to what is coming up. So for the masculine strength, I feel like it's a strange reading today. I don't know why it just feels strange. I feel like the energies are just really strange. So what is coming up in the next week or so? We have the Magician, very first card out. I love that. That's like one of my favorite cards in the deck, um, especially for our, for the Masculine's energy. Um, all right, the Magician, the Two of Pentacles, the Queen of Swords, and the Eight of Pentacles. Wow, okay, so very, very positive. Um, This is a lot of a lot of confidence, a lot of clarity, especially in terms of planning or in terms of thinking about what exactly they want to do. I feel like there are choices here that are being made with this two of pentacles, um, especially in terms of how to find their own balance, right? So there's that mirroring again. But this is them really being able to bring to fruition that love, like what it is that they do want. Feeling that confidence, um, finding that, even getting that sense of self-worth, like realizing that they do have the tools that they need in order to bring a plan into reality here. It's like, again, all these swords, but I feel like most of them are actually positive swords especially having the king and the queen of swords out now. Um, a lot of clear thinking here. And not only that, but being very determined. And again, I'm getting this is cutting things out from their lives that are deceptive or cutting things out that are not serving them, cutting things out that are pretending to be love when they're not love. Whatever is deceptive. And being firm. It's like finding some kind of firmness here and believing in their own self. It's not easy, all right? Two of Pentacles is never an easy energy. It's not easy. Um, but I'm getting with this Eight of Pentacles, this is them actually focusing on this in a very practical way. It's rough. Not going to lie. It is rough. It does look rough. Um, but they're definitely figuring out how to overcome these challenges, how to cut out anything that is throwing them off balance. And it's like putting in that work. So I feel like they're becoming, in the next week, um, more active. I'm not necessarily getting that it's so much towards their feminine, although for some of them it definitely can be. Um, I'm mostly getting that it has to do with whatever it is that they're trying to cut out from their lives, like setting those boundaries, right? The Queen of Swords sets boundaries and is very strict with them. So it's like they're stepping into this energy of realizing that, yes, I can do this. I can have a plan. And I can focus on this and be productive. So, yeah, very positive. Um, let's just see any other message that may want to come out for the feminines. Ooh, the feminines got the magician as well. All right, but you also have the seven of wands in reverse and the chariot in reverse. Um, yeah, I, I'm getting here, this is you letting down your guard or you're being guided to, you know, let down your defensiveness. Don't try to control things, all right? Um, you know, slow down, basically, slow down. That's how you're going to manifest whatever it is that you want. That's how you're going to manifest um, this wish fulfillment, whatever that is to you, happiness, and, you know, bring pleasure into your life. That's how you're going to manifest it, by slowing down and not being defensive, not trying to force something, whatever that something is to you, whether it be how you should be feeling 
or what you should be doing or how you should be interacting or, you know, should I abandon or should I keep hoping? You know, don't, you don't have to decide, basically. Just go day by day, as I said, and um, see what you are guided to do from moment to moment. Something's definitely being manifested here with the magician. And I do feel like the pressure is on. <laughs> the pressure is definitely on, especially for the masculines, also for the feminines, but mostly for the masculines. Um, all right, let's see. Pressure is on for them to be that king of swords, that queen of swords, that knight of swords. It's all about truth, following their authenticity, their truth, and what is in alignment with them. That four of wands, right, which is their divine feminine definitely being guided. I mean, we have the guide card for the masculines and we also have the star, which is also divine guidance here. All right, so let's see. Final message. Please do give me a like if this resonated. Subscribe if you haven't already, because that helps me to tune in to your energy in these readings as well. All right, and we have Imagine and Treasure Island. Definitely feels like something's being manifested here. And it's like, yeah, you're just being asked to just imagine being in this happy place. Being happy. Not necessarily with or without your masculine. Just having that treasure. Having everything that you want. Just relax. <laughs> you know, stop um, moving so fast in whatever that was or forcing yourself or whatever. You know, just imagine. And I feel like this is also the masculines actually imagining that love imagining the end goal here so that is it um, for this time i thank you guys so so much for watching and i will talk to you all very soon much love